together. And uh, that's a it's pretty stressful situation. It makes uh, it makes uh, it makes for pressure in, in both parts of your life. So what are some of the things? I just want to actually step back one bit. One thing that I learned, something that I think I, I hadn't incorporated into this presentation, but I wanted to mention. Um, a really good piece of advice I got from somebody uh, when I was doing the business training was before you start your business, what do you want out of your life, right? Because you know you want to make a million dollars a year, you want to have uh, a bunch of free time. What, what is it that you want to do in your life? Because once you can determine that, you can uh, focus on what you want and have a good understanding of what you want for your personal life, then you can build and structure your business around that personal goal. Okay, because, and that, that'll help to, uh, to avoid some of these types of problems. These problems are going to come up anyway, but that, that one point I did want to bring up. Just before, you know, if, if you already started out or you're thinking about starting out, really think about what you want out of your life. For, for instance, this year, I've been running my business for 10 years, but this year we've focused on um, free time. I said, you know what, uh, we're, we're doing all right financially. I want more free time. I don't want to make more money necessarily. I want to have more time to spend with my kids or to go on vacation or whatever. And that's what we focused on this year, is structuring the business to allow more free time. So identifying what you want in your personal life is a really good, solid step towards, towards building the business in a way that fits what you want out of your life. So as far as uh, dealing with those stressors and press pressures that come with running a business all on your own, the most important thing you can do is set aside at least a little bit of time to focus on on the business, right? So what, what does that mean in the business or on the business? When you're focusing on working in the business, you're out, you're doing service calls, you're paying the bills, all of that stuff that everybody does every day. But to focus on the business, set aside time to work on the business means that you're taking time and you're saying, I'm not doing any of those things. We're gonna think about how we're gonna improve this business, how we're gonna uh, grow this business, and it's more of a strategic mindset, an entrepreneurial mindset. And at the beginning, it's not something you can spend a lot of time on, but there needs to be at least a little bit of time when you don't have to worry about doing service calls or any of those other things, and you can focus just on planning your business and improving it, okay? And you're gonna come up with a million reasons not to do it. Mrs. Jones' refrigerator broke, and she's got medicine in there, so I gotta get over There's always gonna be something. But you absolutely have to set aside some amount of time. You know, maybe it's just an hour or two on a Friday afternoon, whatever, just at the beginning. A little bit of time, focus on doing that and only that. And when you do that, you're absolutely going to bring in more money. Your business will run better and more efficiently. And you know it's going to end up, if, if that's one of your goals, freeing up time in your personal life. And when you're more efficient, when you have a better idea of how this business is supposed to run, you're going to make more money because the business is going to run better and smoother. And uh, this is something that people starting out and uh, even people that have been in business for 20, 30 years, they overlook this a lot. I know people who have been technicians on their own, one-man one shops, for 40 years. Never once have they sat down and strategized what they want to do with the business. They spend all of their time doing service calls, and you know, that's fine, but if your goal is to grow something and build something that works for you personally, you absolutely have to set aside time to work on the business and differentiate that on and in. Those are two totally different things. Uh, so some of the uh, some of the solutions that I've identified as, and I call them non-negotiable because I really think they're very important, and even right at the beginning, something you can start out with. Maybe not the first day, but within within the first year, you should be able to hire somebody to answer the phones. And the first excuse with that is always, well, I can't afford that because I'm out doing calls and it costs you know X amount of dollars to hire somebody to answer the phones. But here's the thing about that. I'm going to give you a little bit of a story. So. Well, before I started running this business 10 years ago, it was just me and my dad. And uh, we answered the phones on the job. We had an old tape recorder, you know, answering machine. And we'd go back to the shop and check the messages and all that. Eventually, we started answering the phone live on a cell phone. But now, you're in the middle of a job and the phone rings and you either have to ignore the phone call, and maybe they call someone else, or you have to interrupt the job you're doing, or you have to ignore the customer you're with, right? So none of those things are ideal. So before we get to how, we'll say why. So why do you want to hire someone to answer the phones right off the bat? Because it saves you an enormous amount of time. Somebody that's answering the phone, that's not distracted by everything else that's going on, they are absolutely going to do a better job than you will 